Welcome. So today I'm going to present lactate testing for self-coached athletes. What I've done is I've pulled all the practical stuff out of the lactate thread that I did on Twitter and I put it into a single presentation for you or for your team if you're a coach to help you find endurance training zones. We're going to be focusing on the moderate domain, zone one, zone two, easy and steady training. Why test? The main reason to test is to get faster gains by working smarter, to make sure that the fatigue you generate with your training generates the best returns for you. Often what happens with endurance training is we're tempted to gravitate towards what I like to call best average training, which is going to put you in your lower heavy domain, zone three, if you're on the five zone system. Lactate testing gives you a reality check to get you in the right part of your power or your pace curve based on your needs and your event. This gives you more energy to use for either your harder training, recover faster, or go longer. What are we looking for when we test? We're looking for the first material uptick in lactate. And I pulled this chart from one of the resources that I linked up on the lactate thread. And if you came to this presentation from my blog, all the resources that I reference are going to be linked, hot linked off that blog page as well. So let's just chat a little bit about this curve. We're not going to need to do double exponential fitting or fit a curve. It's going to be really straightforward uh, today. We're going to be doing submax testing, not maximal testing. And this is a protocol you're going to be able to do on yourself. You're not going to need a partner. You're just going to need to follow my instructions, set things up properly, and get it done. So this test here, we can see in the bottom left-hand corner a baseline tested at a work rate of zero watts, a little over one millimole. And then we can see the blue dot above the 50, the test started at 50 watts and progressed up from there at roughly 25 watt steps. And I'm going to give you some guidelines for how to step it up as well. The thing I like about this test is you can see there's three steps there with not much happening with the lactate. So around 75, the lactate went down a little, then it went back up a little around 100. At 125, up a little more, and then it popped. You got that material uptick at 150. And that's the point we're going to be looking for when we do our protocol and we discuss the case studies a little bit later. Specific goals. So we're looking for faster gains for our training. How do we get those? Field guidance. So we want the lab test to generate information that we can use in the field, in our racing and in our training. We want to surface potential metabolic limiters. Limiters to the training that we want to do and limiters to the races that we want to do. Lactate can give us an insight into when our metabolism is shifting, when we are going to be using less fat for fuel. That's going to be happening as our lactate is moving up. Finally, we want to create a balanced training strategy. So we want to balance the metabolic training with fitness training, with durability, with our movement economy, all these different things. So lactate testing isn't the only resource, but it's one tool that we can use to better establish the training mix, both in the micro cycle and across the year in terms of how we approach our training. Inside the EC Lab protocols document is a list of everything you need. Uh, to do this lactate testing. And what you can see in the picture on this slide is I'm laid out for a test, a bike test. So this is a podium style table that's right beside my kicker bike and it's ready to go. A couple things that I, I want you to remember. More strips, lay out more strips than you think you're gonna need. 
Test the position you want to race in. If you're a triathlete, test your TT position. Don't test a, a road position or a very upright position. Go into the position that you want to train and the position that you're going to race in. Final point. With your setup, your power meter, your outdoor power meter, build it into the overall test. And what I mean by that is I use power pedals. So I'm using an erg bike and I can put the power pedals onto the erg bike. So I have two power meters. I have the power meter uh, measured at the erg and I have power measured at the pedal as well. And I spin the pedals off, I put them on my outdoor bike, I'm ready to go with my test data. Before you start, wash your hands. Get the whole area as clean as you can. You see on that prior slide, it was really nice and neat, all laid out, very clean. The other thing is when you're practicing drawing blood and doing practice lactate samples, do it on the bike or on the treadmill so that you're practicing in the environment where you're going to be testing. It can be a lot easier just to have everything laid out in front of you at a desk and that's not going to help you as much as doing it right in the situation where you're going to be doing the test. These submax tests with a little bit of practice are easy to do on your own. Once you get into the higher powers and paces, you're going to need a partner. It's really with your sweat rate up and the amount of output you're putting out, it gets a lot tougher to do. But for what we're talking about today, this is something that you can do on your own, no problem. Final point, baseline lactate. Get it under 1.5 millimoles. If your baseline is elevated, spin very easy for 15 to 20 minutes and see if you can bring it down. If you can't bring it down, my recommendation, test another day. It's elevated for some reason. A couple months ago, my wife got COVID. I was fighting the virus off. I did a series of lactate tests. My numbers were all over the place. Waste of strips, waste of time. And if I had just paid attention to the fact that my baseline was elevated, I would have just said, hey, Something's up, I'm gonna need a test another day. Protocol tips for you. Number one, start too easy. Be humble with where you're gonna start. Uh, give yourself three steps minimum before you think your lactate's gonna start moving up. It's gonna give you a nice warm up. If you have any anxiety that might be elevating your heart rate, it'll settle down as you get into the test. You'll get a much better data set to work with. Small step height. If you use big steps and you rush the process, you can step right across your zone two. So you can go from zone one straight into zone three. So I'm using 20 watt steps. It's roughly a quarter uh, watt per kilo for me. That works pretty well. Um, my FTP is 275 and I'm starting at a very low level. 10 minute steps are what I recommend for these submax uh, protocols. Why is that? Well, the, the overall test is gonna take between 50 and 60 minutes, not particularly demanding because the first half hour is gonna be really easy. It also gives you the opportunity to take lactate at five and 10 minutes. And if that five minute sample, if the number doesn't quite look right, it looks out of whack, take another one immediately. So by the time you set it up and, and get it done, it'll probably be at about six and a half minutes. And that'll give you, you've got space between five and 10 minutes. You could go five, six and a half, eight and 10. If you're, if you're not comfortable with your samples, you can get four samples on a single step and you'll be able to get a, a good feel for where you're at with your accuracy. Tips for great data. Lay everything out nice and clean. Be a hygiene freak in terms of your sample, how your hands are, the whole thing. Never test the first drop. I like to use the third drop. I keep my hand stable and I bring the strip to the drop and I break the surface tension of the drop with the strip. Alan Cousins calls that only sampling strong drops. Um, if your drop's falling apart, it's contaminated with sweat. So just wipe it away, do another one. You've got plenty of time 
to get a good sample. You're, gonna, you're doing it in the second five minutes of the 10 minute step. I can get four samples done very comfortably in five minutes. There's no time pressure at all. So just relax, get a good sample. Lactate only rises. Once you're in that part of the curve where it started going up, if you get a sample that goes down, assume that sample is suspect or the prior sample is suspect. Take another one, double check. You got plenty of time and you wanna get good data. Finally, we want information we can use in the field. So put your body in the same state that it's gonna be in the field. So that means fed, it means the same amount, your normal amount of coffee or whatever you're using that might excite your heart rate or act as a stimulant. Same deal with fatigue, your normal amount of fatigue. There's a situation where you might want to do a fasted test. We're going to cover that when we do my run test case study. Bike data. Let's get stuck in. We've got four questions, or I had four questions that I wanted to answer with this test. What's too high for my endurance training? What's too low? Am I going too easy? Where's my easy zone? Where's my zone one? Where's my steady zone? Let's look at the data, see what it's telling us. Remember, what you're looking to be is approximately correct. You, you, it's not possible to get a precise answer. Your body's changing all the time. So we just want to give ourselves good guidance so we make less mistakes and we get those quicker gains that we're seeking. Watts, max heart rate per step. Don't take the average, take the max that you hit in that 10 minute step. It's going to be more uh, valuable when you're using it in the field and then lactate per step. So we see when I did the 180 step my lactate ticked up so something happened there. So it looks like I'm entering my steady zone around 180. So in terms of my easy zone it's probably going to be about 105 to 115 and in terms of power output my average is going to be somewhere between 160 and 180 probably closer to 160 than 180. So about 165 or 170 if I'm doing zone one training. And that's gonna feel really easy. There's not gonna be a whole lot of heart rate response and I'm gonna be able to do it for a long time. And that's the idea. You can roll up a lot of easy training, do a lot of working on my metabolic profile using fat for fuel and I don't need to be pouring a bunch of sugar down my throat to do this type of training. I real food, my heart rate's down, I'll be able to process just about anything, uh, any regular food. I could eat a totally normal meal, uh, hop on my bike and do two, three hours of zone one, no big deal. Now, steady. Let's have a look at the top end first, that 220 step. 2.4 millimoles is 1.1 above the 160 watt step and 1.2 millimoles above the baseline. So I've left my moderate domain. That is low uh, heavy domain. Uh, I'm in my zone three and my heart rate is not very high. It's 123 was the max. So for most of that step, I'm probably down around 120 and it does not feel hard. My breathing is relaxed. Uh, I don't feel anything in my legs, maybe a bit of pressure on the pedals just because I'm rolling it at, at 220 watts. But that is too high, uh, metabolically speaking, for my endurance training. So regardless of my ability to do it, it's more intense than I need to be doing. So I gotta back it off. So my zone two, I'd say it's relatively tight. It's gonna be 115 to 120 in terms of beats per minute and my average power is going to be under 200. It's going to be somewhere between 190, 195 watts for those zone two segments if I'm doing them right. And how to do them right? Learn to ride smoothly in variable terrain. So don't be spiking up over 220 in this case because at this stage, I don't have the ability to clear the lactate very well. So all those micro spikes are gonna build up over time and unnecessarily uh, fatigue me. And I don't need to be doing it. I just need to learn how to ride smooth and roll up that zone two training and just do a lot of time at duration. 
run data. This test was great. And my profile is very similar to what many of your profiles will be like. Um, you'll see I got miles per hour, mile pace, K pace, lactate, max heart rate per step. Four miles per hour is power walking for me. My lactate, not much is happening, not much is happening with my heart rate. As soon as I start to run, lactate pops. So I have no easy pace. As soon as I'm running, from a metabolic point of view, it's steady. I'm in that endurance training zone. In some ways, it, it's, uh, it can be a little depressing to kind of get that news, but it's also very good news because it means any pace, any run pace is gonna be beneficial to me. And, I, and there's no pace pressure. I don't have to be pushing my heart rate up. Um, all I need to do is just get out there and just jog and roll it up. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to tolerate uh, more of this really easy jogging for as long as it takes for me to improve the low end part of my curve. Now, when I'm building my training week together, uh, the, the overall mix of training, I need to factor in the fact that I don't really have any easy run pace available to me. So if I'm running, it's steady. Now, I can also train other aspects of my running. Um, ground reaction forces. So it can be tempting to me to train my run fitness by using hills. Well, that works. I've been doing a lot of it. I'm pretty efficient if I do an incline treadmill test with power walking instead of running. However, if my event is ultimately going to be a running event, I need to address this limiter that I have, this metabolic limiter running. And that's what this has flushed out for me. Now, my overall metabolic fitness, though, this zone one training that will benefit my, my body and my ability to fuel myself, best place for that is on the bike. And if you're a runner that appears to be metabolically limited, similar to me, you need to be thinking about that. Maybe I should be using cycling. If you're a runner who is moving up in terms of duration or preparing for a longer event, use cycling. You'll recover very quickly from it. And easy cycling is useful training in terms of helping your body learn how to fuel these longer events. So something to think about. Finally, fasted. Many athletes run on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. 30, 40 minute run, done first thing, eat breakfast after. If you happen to be one of those athletes, then it could make sense for you to do a fasted test to see what you look like in the morning when you're doing your AM workout. Same deal on the bike, but in the bike, you're gonna be doing longer stuff, you're gonna be doing endurance stuff, and I recommend whatever your normal state is for the bike, that's what you, you test. So let's wrap up. I took you through the whole process. If there's a gap in the presentation, there's something you don't understand, ask me a question. So just hit me up on Twitter, either in the lactate thread or tag me on a question. I'll share my experience with you, and if I don't have an answer for you, I'll find one and I'll point you in the right direction. Hopefully this will help you get faster gains in your training. Have fun out there.